Let's, uh, let's build at least two things here. We're going to build the classic hello world. And what we might do is take a look at two different ways of going about building it. Let's start by building that as a Windows-based application. Now, in going about building this, uh, I don't want to go super fast here. Notice that you've got a choice here of how you want to build things. Do you want to build it for an iPhone or do you want to build it for a Mac? When you go through these things, you'll see that there are some different options here, actually more options when you're working with the, uh, with the Mac. But the stuff that you develop over here as an application for, for the iPhone, again, can be ported directly over to the Mac with very, very little change. I'm going to tell it I'd like to build a Windows-based application. Let's call this one Hello World. It actually goes out, and just as most other visual environments, it builds out all of the basic stuff that you need to make this happen. In fact, out of the box, just as you would get with something like Visual Studio, I can tell it to build and go. Give it a second, it brings up the emulator, and oh, hey, I've got a working application. It doesn't do much yet, but it puts together the whole framework. One of the nice things about this, though, is that in order to start working with it, you don't have to start taking apart any of the internals of what was built already, as opposed to some other APIs, some other development environments. Instead of developing my own code now, which is what I'd like to do, in other environments, I have to go start taking apart what was already created and, and customizing it. Here, what I could do is, let me go into classes here. Now, I don't have to put it in the classes folder, of course, but let's try to be organized here. I'm going to create a new object. I'm going to tell it I'd like to add a new file. I'd like to add, I'm going to use a Cocoa Touch class. Now, again, if I go down here, or to Cocoa, We've got exactly the same stuff, more things, but I've got the Objective-C classes, like NS objects, or now I've got some others, like NS documents, which are generic documents that are used in the Mac. So it's, again, the same kind of environment. I'm going to use an NS object, which is the root of all objects that you've got in a Mac or an iPhone. And let's call this, uh, how about, hello. Sounds like a nice start. So it gives me the immediate framework for the object. All of the inheritances here for the UI kit. I've got some basic code in here for the implementation, which currently does nothing. All I need to do is add my code. Now, here's where a little tutorial goes a long way. I'm going to show you how you can add features into your object to interface into the actual iPhone interface. And that's the part where it says, well, you just create an object and it's got these methods, but, but how do I actually make that happen? Here's the code example. What I do is I use a, uh, a sort of fictional type. This is not a real type. There's a couple of these in the iPhone or in, the, in Cocoa. One of them is the type of ID. This type, it is a valid type, but inside of the compiler, inside of the operating system, this is actually just type void. So these are just fictional types. It's just convenient names that have been laid on top of them to make things make more sense. But I could actually use type void for everything that I do this evening. Instead of using ID, which is the generic type, I want to use a specific type. What I'd like to do is create an interface builder outlet, something that I can use to interface into the actual screen that people are going to see. To do that, you just create an IB outlet. That, whoops, not in all capital letters, doesn't like that. IB outlet. That's it. That's the type I need to use. I, I need an outlet to the interface. And then I have to say what kind of thing it is I'm going to touch. I think what I'm going to work with is going to be a user interface label. Because I'd like to be able to set things and change things that are showing up on the interface. And uh, let's see, what are we going to call this guy? It's going to be a pointer to the actual interface object. Let's call it, uh, how about the label? You can name it anything you want to. Uh, and I'll tell you what, there's something else we're going to need here. I think we're going to need a button. Because I want to say hello world, but if I just print that on the screen, that's not impressive. Let's at least be able to press a button here. Again, this is pretty easy stuff. I need to create a function to do this, a member function. To create the member function, now I'm going to do something to start with that some of you are probably going to scratch your head, and you should ask me what it is. But I'm just, just watch for a second. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, I want to create an, well, I need an action here, right? I'm going to let someone do something. An interface builder action, that's the type. What type is that? Well, and that's what it's going to mean, right? Create an action. What real type is it? What is it really? Type void. 
it's it's a 